All right, so we move into lesson one of characteristics of linear relations, and it's line segments on a Cartesian plane. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to look at different lines in the Cartesian plane and then determine the difference in those line segments, or meaning the distance. So let's start off right away with line segments. Well, we, kn we know from mathematics courses in the past, whether it be grade 8, 9, or even our math 15, we know that a line segment can be represented by two variables side by side. So if we talk about AB or AB with this bar on it, it's actually meaning that we have some sort of line segment connecting two vertices A and B. Now, consider the line segment shown on the grid. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out the length of these just by counting them. So I'm going to go to for A, B, C, D, and E, F and just count the distance between each of them. When I count them, well, I go from A, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to B. So I'm going to put 6 units in the blank. When I go over to C and D and count the difference, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 as the difference. So I'm going to put 10 here. And then lastly, for E and F, I'm going to count the distance, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as the distance. All right. Now, in the next point, instead of just rudimentary count counting them or just strictly counting them on the Cartesian plane, what we can do is label the endpoints and then use the endpoints as a way to see what the difference is. So here's what I mean by that. If I label the end of A, the end of B, end of C, end of D, end of E, and end of F, what we're going to do is we're going to put the coordinates for each of these points. So coordinate A looks like it appears at 1 and 8. So I'm going to put 1 and 8. For B, it's at what looks to be 8 and 8. So 8 for X, 8 for Y. Now I go to C, and that looks like to be at negative 3. And then it looks to be at a height of 4. And then point D looks like it's at uh, positive 7. And then also 4 for Y. There we go. And then E is at what looks to be negative 8, or it's actually negative 9 for the X, and all the way down to negative 6. And then the F value is at, in this case for X, negative 2, and same value, negative 6 for the Y value. Okay, so they say the difference in the X coordinates for X, B, and X, A, or the line segment difference between B and A is in this case, well, if I subtract their X values, let's just show this algebraic step for the first one. Well, the B value or X, B is here. So they're saying that the second X value for the coordinates A, B is eight. So I'm gonna go eight, subtract. Well, the coordinate for A for X was one, and so I'm gonna go eight minus one, which is equal to seven. Therefore, the difference between the two is seven. Now, if I look at, uh, let's say I look at the difference from XD to XC, well, what is that asking me to do? It's saying, let me subtract this value from this value and see what we get. So we would do 7 minus the negative 3. That's going to get us 10 here. And so I could put 10 in the blank here. Lastly, I'm going to do the difference in X for E to F. That means I'm going to go from negative 2 to negative 9. That is going to be a difference of 7. Now, the one thing I want to go double check here is that we should know that the lengths from A, B, C, D, and E, F should be the same when we do these calculations below. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to double check the X value. And it looks like, yes, for the value of X uh, for A, it should be 2, which therefore would make this equal to 8 minus 2, which is 6, and therefore our 1 in the blank should be 6. Because whether we count it on the graph or we count it using algebra and subtracting the x values, we should get the same values. So the values here should be the same value as the counted values. All right, how can the endpoints of a horizontal line segment be used to find the length of a line? Simply subtract them. We subtract the x values. Now, when we subtract the x values, we want to take the larger x value, which I'll just denote as large x value, subtract the small x value. There we go. And I guess we don't need a short form large there because we just know it's one more letter there. So we're going to go large x minus small x. There we go. Or subtract the x values. All right, moving on to this next part here. Well, they say the line segment AB has these endpoints. Determine the length of AB. Okay, what I'm going to notice here is that 
if I have a horizontal line segment, the Y value is the exact same thing. So if you have a horizontal line segment, expect your two Y values to be equal. We're going to subtract our X values. And now we want to say, well, which one's our largest value in this case? Our largest X value is two because the other one is negative five. So large value minus small value, that's going to be two minus that negative five. Therefore, the difference in this line segment or line segment AB is equal to 2 minus minus 5, which is obviously 2 plus 5, which is 7. And on the Cartesian plane, if we're not given units, we just call this 7 units or 7 blocks away. Determine the length of a line segment where we have this arbitrary example, a minus 2b and a plus 4b. Again, we should see a common y value, even if it's just in variables. b, when we have a horizontal line, it should be the same thing for y. The difference is we have different uh, x values. We need to determine which one's larger. Well, if they both contain a, but the difference is plus 4 versus negative 2, the a plus 4 is the greater line segment. So therefore, p q in this case, which is our line segment, is equal to, I'm going to go a plus 4, which is the first piece, minus our smaller x value, which is a minus 2. What we're going to realize is that the a's go away because we have a minus a, and then we have 4 minus minus 2. This is going to be 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. Therefore, p q is equal to 6. And again, we can just put units because they did not give us like centimeters or something included here. And we're talking about the Cartesian plane. So we're just going to call each block a unit. All right, now we're going to shift our focus to vertical line segments. Same idea, we're just going to deal with vertical lines instead of horizontal lines. So to start this, we're going to count up what each line segment is in terms of their distances. So from G to H, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's 12 units of G of H. We then go to IJ, and I'm going to count this up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We get 5 units from IJ. And then lastly, KL, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units up, and there we go. Okay, just like we did with the horizontal lines, I want you to put a dot at the end of each of these lines, indicating that we're putting the vertices, and these are going to be our endpoints that represent the uh, coordinates we're going to place here. So the coordinates of G are, well, we go negative 3 for X, and then for the y value, it looks like we are down at negative 8. For h, we're looking at negative 3 as well, but instead the y value is positive 4. We then go to i, and i is at 1, and it looks to be 2. And then we go to j, which is also at 1, but instead its vertical height is 7. Moving to K and L, we go to K, which is at negative uh, or positive 6 for X, I should say, and all the way down to negative 8 for Y. And then in terms of L, we know L is going to be at negative or positive 6 as well for X, and then down two units to negative 2. Okay, let's do the algebra behind all these in order to solve for them by subtracting their y values. Okay, well, if I subtract the y values here, because we know that a vertical line is going to have a consistent x value, when I subtract these and I do the algebra, we're going to go of the y of h, which is 4, minus the y of g, which is going to be negative 8. This gives me positive 12, which I should expect from above. We then do the algebra find the next one. We say, okay, well, the larger is 7 minus the smaller, which is 2. It therefore gives me a difference of 5. And then lastly, we go negative 2 minus the negative 8. This is going to give me negative 2 plus 8, which is equal to positive 6. And again, this should correspond to my counted units, so I should expect to see that these are the same as these. If they're different, I know that maybe I counted wrong or I did the algebra wrong when I went into plugging these in. In the sentence below, they say, how can we use the endpoints to determine the length of a vertical line segment? Again, we just subtract them. So we're going to subtract the y values. And then to make sure that these are going to be a positive line segment, or more specifically, a positive amount of units, we just want to make sure we subtract the large y value and then take away the small y value. Perfect. All right. Now, moving on to this, we see another uh, set of problems that are very similar to our first one. They say the line segment RS has endpoints R and S. Determine the line segment of RS. Well, the line segment RS 
is going to be equal to, and now we look at this and say, well, we're going to take the, well, first of all, I want to point out that the X values in a vertical line are always the same. And then we're going to take the larger Y value and subtract the small. So larger Y value of the two is negative four. We subtract away negative nine. When we subtract negative nine, it's going to actually add it. And therefore we get a distance of five units. Okay, just as we did before, we look at an arbitrary example of PQ where we don't, we're not given strict numbers, but rather variables. If I'm looking at a vertical line, the X values should be the same. We have a difference in the Y values. What is that difference in the Y values? Well, let's see. If I look at B and B plus 10, B plus 10 is going to be the larger length. So PQ is going to be equal to, we go B plus 10, which is our larger Y value, minus our smaller Y value, which is B. We go B minus B, which eliminates our B, and therefore the line segment is 10 units. All right. Now, before we end this lesson, we have to look at our Pythag review, and this is going to be an introductory into how we can use Pythag and other uh, problem solving skills in order to solve lengths of line segments. So by Pythag, we know that when we take the two smaller sides of a triangle and square them of a right triangle, we square them, add them together, it gives us the hypotenuse, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to our larger side, c squared. Okay, let's use Pythag to show how we can get the lengths of the line segments given here. So we have two different line segments, a, b, c, d. Let's start off with a, b. I want to go, how much does this go down? How much does this go over? Or the rise and run. We know it, it from to get from B to A or A to B, this thing is going to have to rise by, it looks, from uh, positive 7 all the way down to negative 3 because this is 7, this is negative 3 for height. We know that's a difference of 10 units. In terms of the X value, well, I know the X's are going to start at what I believe to be negative 9 and then negative 5 is where they start. What does that mean the difference is? 4 units. Okay, so we have our AB now, or we have our lengths of our smaller sides, which are the technical A's and B's in the Pythag theorem. So here's what we're going to do. So for first triangle, we know that AB squared, because that is the length of the hypotenuse, is the length of AB. AB squared is equal to 4 squared plus 10 squared, because those are our two smaller sides. Well, 4 squared is 16 plus 10 squared, which is 100. This is 116. But that's for AB squared. What we want to solve for is just AB alone. So I'm going to square root this. Now, what, what I want to realize is that they said answer to the exact value and the decimal value to the nearest tenth. So we're going to have two solution types here. What I'm going to do is arrow over this way and say, well, first of all, AB could be symbolized by AB is equal to the square root of 116. If I want to make this the exact value, I need to figure out what 116 divides by or what is the largest perfect square that divides 116. 116 is an even number, so what if I took 116 and divided it by something like 16? Well, that's going to give me some sort of decimal. If I take 116 and divide it by 36, that also gives me a decimal. If I take 116 and divide it by 4, I get 29. So we're going to realize that the largest perfect square that will divide 116 is this. And the reason being is what type of number is 29? It's a prime number, meaning this is in fact the largest number that will divide this. So we say therefore AB as a length seg segment or as a line segment in an exact value is the square root of 4, which is 2 square root 29. Because whatever prime number is left behind, this isn't going to be a perfect square. We leave it behind as a root. Therefore, this is our exact value for our line segment. But they also asked, can we put this in terms of a decimal? Well, as a decimal, when I take AB and I take the square root of 116, the square root of 116 in your calculator will give you AB is equal to 10.8. Because I believe you get 10.77, and then you round it to the nearest tenth, which is the first decimal place. There's your answer. Okay, we're going to repeat the exact same process, except in this time, we're going to be dealing with line segments C and D. So I look at C and D, and I have to go down some units, over some units. Okay, if I'm at positive 6 and I go down to negative 2, that means that's a difference of 8. So I'm at 6, I go down to negative 2, therefore that's my line. In salmon here, I'm going to represent, well, we go up to what I believe to be positive 8 here for x's, and then we start at negative 4. That means there's a difference of 4 units, and now we're just going to repeat the exact same process over again, but instead, 
for the problem C and D. So for CD, it's CD squared is equal to 8 squared plus we have 4 squared because those are the lengths of our smaller sides. We then say CD squared is equal to 64 plus 16. Well, this is going to give me CD squared being equal to 80. But yet again, we don't want to figure out what it is in terms of CD squared. We want just the line segment CD. So we're going to have to take the square root. And therefore, here comes our two solution types. CD is equal to root 80. Root 80 can be split into, in terms of an exact value, we can split this into 16 times 5. And then we take the square root of 16, which is 4, and then we leave behind the prime number. So it becomes CD is equal to 4 root 5. Okay, that's our exact value. If they ever asked you the exact value, they want it in a simplified mixed radical, no decimal. Okay, I want to do the solution to a decimal though because they also asked for that solution type. So CD is equal to root 80. I type in square root of 80 in my calculator. Therefore, CD is equal to 8.9 here. And therefore, that's our other solution. Now, the only other thing I'd recommend adding to this problem is that if they tell us, oh, we want the length of these line segments, on all of these answers, we could write in, oh, it's 8.9 units. It's 4 square root 5 units. It's 10.8 units. And then lastly, on the exact value over here, we could say it's 2 square uh, 29 units length. Because if they don't give us centimeters or anything like that, what are they talking about? Well, on the Cartesian plane, each block represents a unit. And so we're saying it is, in this case, 2 square 29 units, 10.8 units, and same thing for our other problem there. So just be really careful what they ask for, because in future grades, on numeric response or even multiple choice or any type of problem, even written, they may ask you for the different types, either in exact values or rounded to some value. So you need to be comfortable put, providing answers in both formats. All right, here's where you get your practice with the assignment. Please be comfortable with calculating the distances between uh, segments or the distances between vertices of line segments.